we have one uh, review item before us. It is now past 11 o'clock. Consequently, uh, we as the Commission need to determine whether we proceed at this time or we uh, leave this till another night. What is the desire of the Commission? I think we can proceed, particularly given the people who have earnestly been waiting all of this time receiving a civics lesson about how the Planning Commission hears other cases, and I admire their patience for uh, sticking around this late, as we do too frequently. So uh, I take it that's a yes. Okay, with that, let us uh, proceed uh, on development review permit 06001-1930 Stewart Street. Um, and I'm not going to read all of this, but it has to do with the mobile home park, and we're going to hear all about it from our esteemed staff. Thank you, Chairman uh, Pugh. Uh, uh, just before we do that, any ex parte uh, issues here, uh, communications? Not really, but just for the record, I live about three quarters of a block west of the site on Delaware Avenue um, in a rented house and walk by it frequently and walk around the park, but it joins it frequently. And for my I, part, I've never set foot on it, though, actually. Well, for my part, I actually went by there at about 5.30 this afternoon just to get a sense of what the place was like and should also point out that my offices are located at Bergamot Station, which is less than 500 yards away or 500 feet away. However, to get from my front door to there takes probably better part of a mile. So uh, I don't consider that to be a conflict of interest as uh, that, but I'm just yeah, declaring I, I, it. I would just add for the record that we looked at uh, that issue with respect to both of you and determined that there was no conflict under the, uh, the requirements of state law. Uh, yes. I, did, I did a drive, a drive through the project a Monday uh, afternoon and uh, stopped and observed uh, a number of the spaces that were impacted and, to, and where they were located, I think it was, X4, I forget if it was 14 or not. Uh, also, I did a uh, visit to uh, the Village Trailer Park to compare and did a walkthrough on Village Trailer Park for the full thing, so I just want to disclose that. Finally. Here we go. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman Pugh. Uh, Scott Albright, Associate Planner. Um, I'm going to have a PowerPoint presentation uh, for you describing this particular project for a development and review permit uh, at the Mountain View Mobile Home Park at 1930 Stewart Street. Um, must disclose, after Jing's uh, fabulous presentation, this one's going to be a little bit more low-tech, so I, I apologize. <laughs> um, kind of give you a brief... Uh, the, the City of Santa Monica Housing Division is proposing this project um, for the Mountain View Mobile Home Wait, Park. Housing Essentially, Authority or Housing Division? Housing Authority, isn't it? It's the Housing Division. Not housing the Division housing Authority? It's two separate <laughs> things. Okay. No, I want to know. It's just come up three times. Essentially, this, this slide right here uh, gives you the, the components of this particular project. The, the, one of the critical issues here is the establishment of lot lines within the, uh, the particular in, within the mobile home park, uh, identifying the 105 uh, sites, individual pads. There also will be uh, proposed as part of this would be the installation of eight new uh, mobile home units. Uh, most of the uh, existing infrastructure on site will be upgraded, including the electrical, uh, water, sewer. Um, the streets will be regraded and repaved to uh, eliminate any ponding issues. I know there's some drainage issues within the park. Uh, On-site fire hydrants will be in included. Um, and also the addition of natural gas to the park. A portion of the park is currently served by some natural gas, but um, there are uh, the majority of the park is currently served by uh, a, propane, uh, a propane service. This kind of gives you a, uh, an, 
an aerial perspective of the mobile home park in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, the, the, the site is approximately uh, 4.75 acres in size. It is located uh, within a district that's uh, RMH, which is the mobile home district. Uh, it's located or it's identified within the general plan for special office district, which is very specific in requiring the retention of mobile home parks. So that's very important to point that out. <coughs> Uh, the, the park was <coughs> developed approximately in 1949 and currently has 105 rent controlled, uh, not units, it's rent controlled sites. I wanted to make sure that was very clear because the, uh, they, the, most some of the units are not necessarily owned by the uh, housing division or by the city. They are owned by individual owners who just happen to have uh, rent the, the, a portion of the park. Uh, one other very important thing to point out is that the city-owned mobile home parks are exempt from the provisions of Title 25 as per the California Administrative Code and the Health and Safety Code. That's important because a lot of the issues raised by some of the uh, uh, residents are concerning the Title 25 um, requirements. Um, in the lower left hand or lower right hand corner is a, a site plan showing the existing conditions of uh, the mobile home park. What this also shows, and it's, it probably doesn't come up very clearly, are some there are approximately 151 parking spaces on site currently um, I want to make sure that you realize that a lot of these parking spaces are not recognized because they are located on essentially areas that should be developed with mobile homes so as development on individual sites people have added additions um, have taken away on-site parking adjacent to their units people have obviously made some compromises and, and sought out parking wherever they can find it. So um, the proposal is for the addition of 105 sites as part of the project, parking sites, which includes and also uh, two additional visitor spaces. Just wanted to give you a um, brief uh, photographic tour of the, uh, the site and the existing conditions surrounding it. In the upper left hand corner is a site uh, on the opposite side of Stewart Street. Uh, these uh, actually, it's a, a stable single-family neighborhood, although these two units that are indicated here or shown here are actually non-conforming multifamily uh, or apartment dwellings. Um, the lower left-hand corner represents the actual frontage along Stewart Street for the mobile home park. And the lower right-hand corner represents um, a photograph of the, uh, the northern property line adjacent to Stewart Street Park. These three photographs represent um, the, the lower left-hand corner is the entrance to the, the primary entrance into the mobile home park. Uh, the upper um, upper left-hand cor corner represents a photograph of essentially existing the A units and the B units, and then the lower corner represents um, the, Vir the exit. It's a one-way exit onto uh, Stewart Street, that, which is just opposite Virginia Avenue. Kind of moving within the park, um, the upper left-hand corner represents, that's the area where um, part of the proposal is the addition of a new fire road, interior fire road for um, uh, public safety vehicles. Uh, that is the area that will be impacted by the addition of that new fire road. Um, the lower left-hand corner is a shot of the existing development along, I believe that's the uh, D and E units. And then, um, the lower right hand corner, the mobile home at the very end right here is actually one that will be relocated for the purposes of providing additional fire, fire department or emergency vehicle access. That is in the lower right there. So there will be a street cut through there for fire safety purposes, or emergency vehicle purposes I should say. Uh, the upper left hand corner. Um, is representative of where that additional fire access street uh, will be punched through. Um, the lower left <coughs> left hand corner represents the emergency um, access gate that is currently existing within the park. And then finally, the uh, the pool picture is just the uh, recreational facility that's available on site. In your packet, you got several maps. Um, 11 by 17s, and we also gave you a full uh, copy of the plan. It probably was 
fairly confusing because there was a lot of colors and there was just a lot of lines on there. What I intend to do is try to see if I can you know, clarify it just a little bit for you. What this represents is <coughs> the units that will be um, existing and will remain in place. There would be no relocation activity affecting these. There is approximately, I believe it's 36 or 37 of these units that will be remained. And again, these are primarily affecting, um, this is the X row right here, and most of these would be the E and G rows and some of the, the numerical uh, spaces. These units represent those that will be relocated. There are approximately 36 of those. Again, most are along the exterior uh, boundaries of the particular site um, and reflect the addition of the new streets. Um, some um, are moving um, very short distances. Others are a little bit greater distance to accommodate these streets. The green units that represent here are the location of the proposed eight units that are associated with this particular project. Uh, the proposal is for a standard single wide uh, 12 by 36 units to be placed on these particular units or particular sites, excuse and me. Those would be new people, right? New units. But not necessarily new people. Not necessarily. And finally, um, this plan also identifies 24 additional sites. Um, that will be um, in the future uh, proposed with units. Uh, the rest site plan represents that we show here represents 24 of the sites, and they're again showing a standard 12 by 36 unit. Would those be new people and new units? It, new units and potentially new new people as well. And it's also, um, you know, people can choose to relocate their units to particular sites as well. Here's just an overall composite to kind of throw it at you and give you some bearing as to um, how the park will look at the build out. This plan uh, uh, is kind of a jumbled here, but this is really the re relocation plan for some of the units. Uh, again, most of them will be intact, and most, I think the housing division staff will have percentages for you of how many will be. Uh, you know, moving between one and five feet or whatever, but a, a good majority are, you know, you'll see very small uh, movement in the units. Again, it's to accommodate the property lines. Uh, one thing I also want to point out is, again, because Title 25 is not um, applicable to this particular park, um, however, the, the staff did utilize Title 25 in designing the park because Title 25 represents the ultimate safety um, that the state mandates for mobile home parks and it's felt to be appropriate that we should try to accommodate their standards as best we can. This map is very simple, just showing the proposed um, lot line layout for the interior of the park. One thing to also point out is that currently uh, the park does not have interior lot lines. Um, any lot lines are implied, meaning that um, they may have been utilized by a particular person uh, in planting or building stuff, but um, there are currently no lot lines within the mobile home park. Staff in, within this, the report identified a couple areas of concern. This is the <laughs> photograph of the Stewart Street frontage. Our concern was that um, we wanted to make sure that the park uh, integrates itself into the greater community. Um, I know there's been discussions maybe internally within the park, uh, amongst the park residents about a potential for uh, maybe a perimeter wall along here to, you know, provide maybe a sense of security to the park. Staff's concern with that is that, you know, we want to make sure that the park is, you know, is perceived as being part of the overall community and that um, if a wall is, like, is considered it would have a, an isolating effect, and that's not necessarily the, the direction we want to take with, with this particular mobile home park. And finally, I know there will be some current, uh, probably some concerns raised by um, residents of the park regarding the interior roadway um, and the impact that will have on uh, residents. Of course, I'm going to leave you now with the question. 
um, that was in your staff report um, to the proposed improvements to the mobile home park, particularly the reconfiguration of the park's layout, promote appropriate principles of site design relative to location, size, massing, and placement of roadways in units that mi minimize disruption to existing residents. Um, again, our st staff recommended action is to approve development review permit um, 06-001 and of course approve the uh, statement of official action. Um, I also wanted to point out we did receive a couple letters and I know you've, you've received copies of those from some residents. Um, they have raised some concerns and a lot of them are Title 25 related um, and we can certainly address any of those and, um, and also I think there's a concern uh, at least I had a, a couple conversations with a person concerning some of the interior property lines and the impact that that will have on on um, some of the development that individuals have done with their individual individual units, such as landscaping, and how will the imposition of property lines and lot lines impact this landscaping? That you know, many they've cared for this for very many many years, and they just don't want to see it. So um, I understand that the park has some rules, and they've actually set up. Um, uh, uh, they've included in their rule package uh, some provisions to allow joint easements between property owners. So I think that's a, a addressing that issue. Um, again, I know Housing Division will probably have some embellishment on some of this uh, proposal, and um, I'd be glad to answer any questions you may have. And uh, does the Housing Division want to make a presentation to us at this time? Do we have any oh, okay. yeah, questions oh, for the question planner at this time? Okay. I guess the housing division is up. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. I'm Ron Barefield. I'm with the housing division. And uh, to answer Commissioner Johnson's question, the, it is the housing division application. And within the housing division, there's two sections. There's what we call the production and preservation. Basically, that's loaning money to nonprofits to build affordable housing. And then there's the housing authority. So both, oh, both those sections are under the, the housing division. Thanks. I'd like to, I just want to take a couple of minutes, two or three minutes, to, to provide a little overview and some additional information. And then we'd be happy to answer any questions instead of taking the full 15 minutes. Um, Regarding the, some additional information regarding the housing composition of the park, there's approximately 80 occupied space, or 80 occupied units. Of that, there's 59 uh, that are homeowners, that is, they own the mobile home and rent the space. And then there's about 21 renters. They're renting the unit from the city of, San, or the, uh, city of Santa Monica, and, uh, and then also renting the space, too. Uh, approximately 40% of those units are recreational ve vehicles or trailers. And that's certainly something we would like to encourage uh, upgrades for, and that's one of the reasons we're asking for the additional uh, uh, eight units to be placed on there, and then I'll talk a little bit about further assistance we want to provide. Uh, approximately 60% 60 60 the balance <coughs> of the mobile homes, uh, about 48% of those are single-wide, and about 12% uh, of those are double-wide. And regarding the, the income levels of the, the residents there, this is truly an affordable housing community. And that was one of the one of the goals in the purchase when the city purchased the park. Approximately 70% of the residents are low income. So why do we want to establish these lot lines? Well, we certainly wanted to def define the spaces. Right now, we need to define 105 required spaces. Rent control says we need to have 105 spaces there. So we need to move on and be able to rent those spaces out. <coughs> it's going to define the roadway widths, uh, especially regarding emergency access. The there are areas in there that we didn't have enough clear width, there were, there were concerns, there were uh, incidents in the past where emergency vehicles were having a hard time getting through there. We, on a temporary basis, we've basically uh, identified parking spaces and we've enforced uh, people not parking in the roadways so the emergency vehicles can get in there. But on a permanent basis, this is another reason for identifying this or, or, or moving forward with this plan. Um, it's going to define parking spaces. Parking's tough. It's tight. It's a tight site but at least we'll have designated parking spaces. And um, we did find two additional parking spaces. So there is four guest parking spaces instead of two parking spaces. We misnumbered the, the, uh, the plan. Uh, so we, we do have two more additional spaces on there. Um, it, is, it establishes defined setbacks for the structures, primarily for safety. Mobile homes can burn down in six minutes. So 
if you can't get emergency vehicles back there, and I, you know, we know we're impacting some individuals more than others because we're putting these emergency uh, roads, these cut throughs in there, but it's for the safety of all the residents in the park, and that's why we're, we want to move forward with this. And, and the fire department basically approved the plan based on that. And when we have these lot lines, we get to do what we want to do, which is do the right thing for the, the residents there and do the upgrades. We're going to have, we're going to upgrade the water, <coughs> unequal pressure throughout the park. We're going to upgrade the sewer. We're constantly repairing the sewer lines. The sewer lines are constantly backed up. We're talking about infrastructure that's 50 years old out there. We're going to have gas. There's only two rows that have natural gas. Everybody else is on propane. Propane, propane is ex extremely combustible. It's very unsafe and it's expensive. People limit their showers because they didn't need the, the hot water. Or they're using too much propane. Electricity. Right now we limit everybody to a 30 amp panel. That's not sufficient for uh, uh, a modern mobile home. Parks are designing their the, the amperage to about 100 amps for spaces for mobile home parks. Uh, we'll add cable TV, telecommunications, so all the modern conveniences. We're going to have wider roadways, again, primarily for emergency vehicles and access. Uh, landscaping, integrated streetscape, uh, landscaping throughout the park. Fire hydrants, we'll be adding two new fire hydrants in the park, again, for safety reasons. So what design criteria did we, we go into this with? Um, because we, obviously, we were sensitive to the needs of the residents, and we knew we'd be impacting people to get this 105 spaces on there. So we said, going into this, we said, let's keep the basic layout of the park. Let's not start moving a lot of the things around. Let's keep the basic street system, except where we've improved it with emergency access. Uh, so, and let's improve it so that we, we basically use the Title 25 design standards so that we're hitting on all the health and safety things we need to do as a responsible owner. So how did that impact uh, the residents or the mobile homes? I think Scott mentioned 36, 37. I have about 38 units that we would be impacting with, uh, with these movements. But 10 of those units are only going to move 1 to 2 feet. 13 of the units are only going to move 3 to 6 feet. And then 15 units are going to be moving more than 6 feet. Um, relocation assistance, the city's going to pay for relocating the mobile homes. If we pick them up and they fall apart, we've got to deal with it. Um, we'll obviously be hiring consultants, doing inspections, getting the right people to, to move these units and working with the individuals to, to move the units. Beyond that, if there's temporary relocation assistance needed, then we take care of that. We have to do that just because of the funding we use for the park. So we're committed to assisting the residents in moving these units and doing the right thing. The other thing is, for the residents that are there, and we know some individuals are more impacted than others, that, and I've talked to some of the individuals and said, I'd be happy to put you at the top of the list to move you to another area within the park if, if there's an available space that fits your mobile home. We'll do that. We'll take care of you. We'll do that for you. And that's, that's true, and, and that would be consistent with anybody we talk to as far as the existing residents. Homeowner assistance, we have a rehab, rehabilitation pl uh, program right now that assists mobile homes if they need to rehabilitate their, their mobile homes. Of course, we'd like to see everybody move up, upgrade their units to either recreational vehicles or trailers into a decent mobile home, and we'd like to assist in that. Another thing that we've talked to the Housing Commission about, and they've approved in concept, and we hope to move it forward to the City Council, we'd like to have a mobile home replacement program. That not only would assist the, the current residents who would like to upgrade their units, and of course they'd have to be income qualified, but it also would encourage renters possibly to be homeowners so that we could end up with more home ownership in the park. So that's another thing we'd like to propose, and of course council would have to approve that. So in conclusion, we want to do the right thing as the property owner. We want to be responsible, and above all, we want to make sure that it's a safe park. We don't want to find out that because we didn't do these upgrades, we didn't increase, in, increase the emergency access availability, that units burn down, like I said, in six minutes, and in a park, and if you can't get back there, you're going to have lots of, lots of issues. So with that, I'll sit down, and if you have any questions, we have our whole team here to answer any of the questions. Thank you. I have one question. Sure. Uh, that's uh, as to the new units. If I understood the explanation, we're going to pick up. On the one hand, there's 105. There's approved 141. 
we're going to take the existing um, 90 something and add 11 spaces or something equals 105. Of the 105, 24 of those can be brand new uh, manufactured housing. Do I have the numbers roughly correct? Roughly, there'd be uh, an opportunity for 24 new mobile homes to come in. Now, on the 24 new manufactured homes, these are not RVs and they're not trailers, these are manufactured homes. We do not allow RVs or trailers to come in right. the park anymore. Those 24, are those um, open to other folks who are existing um, mobile home owners in uh, elsewhere in the city? I'm thinking Village Park in particular. We haven't defined the criteria for accepting new applicants to the park, but we, we, first of all, we need to make sure that we have the infrastructure to accept any new residents. Right now, we're not accepting any new residents. No, of course not. But I'm just saying, of the 24, when everything's said and done, these were 20. The, the others that are quote unquote new are basically relocations or upgrades of existing tenants, as I understand it. You said there was 30 plus another 30 something, and then. This additional 24 is for what I'll call new residents. Yes, potentially, that would be new, potentially residents. new residents. Yes, and that's all I want to get straight is that those would be for new residents, potentially for new residents of the park. That, that yes, that qualify. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Commissioner Clark. Okay, well, a quick question. I noticed some references to potential Torca conversion of this. Is that just? Ancient history, or how does that figure in? It's it was a funding source. We used Torca funds and redevelopment funds to purchase the park and ongoing operations of the park. We've used funds, primarily redevelopment funds. Okay, but it doesn't refer to an actual uh, purchase of the park by the people who live there. No, it was just funds that were used. It's an eligible um, Torca funds were an eligible use, and that was used as, as part of the okay. purchase. Thanks. So my only question is, why would you want to change a maze that even Hampton Court would be uh, jealous of? <laughs> <laughs> it was a rhetorical question. Um, at this point, uh, we have a number of chits before us. And uh, if you would come up, uh, we have Cheryl Dryman, uh, Tom Roybal, and Phyllis Scott. And you have three minutes each. My name is Cheryl Dryman, and I live at the Mobile Home Park. I've lived there for uh, 18 years. And I'm right in the front. I'm going to be moved. Um, I'm concerned because my mobile home is 40 years old. It has sat in that spot for the whole time. And uh, I don't think it's going to move. Um, and I understand that there is funding to help replace, but I want to make sure that that happens. And um, I will not qualify for low-income housing help. Um, I'm a teacher in the school district, and um, I make more than I can qualify for. <laughs> and I also uh, want to urge you to... Um, try to help people with their plants. I have several trees, fruit trees, that I've grown from babies and uh, roses, and I would sure hate to lose them. Thank you. Thank you. And it, as I understand it, uh, the city has indicated that they would replace or renovate or upgrade as necessary if there was difficulty moving that and they will confirm that later on. Uh, Good evening. Yes, uh, Tom Roybal. Yeah. Good evening, Commissioners and Chairman. Uh, my name is Tom Roybal and I live at 1930 Stewart Street at, in the Mobile Home Park, uh, number 59. Um, uh, I would, I, I heard this evening uh, Ron speak about uh, anyone wishing to uh, have their uh, coaches moved and I would like to speak in behalf, uh, on my own behalf uh, to indicate that uh, I would be interested in having that uh, discussing with Ron uh, that uh, my uh, uh, 
that we can move my mobile home into uh, another position. I'm uh, the only uh, mobile home that's in a corner or on a, on a curve, and I'm kind of pinched on both sides. And uh, I uh, went to see uh, Scott uh, Albright this evening, and I saw the latest uh, rendering of the position of uh, the coaches in the park. And um, with the measurements that he had available, uh, it's very evident that uh, I don't uh, my variances will not uh, comply with uh, or don't meet the uh, Title 25 uh, um, distances uh, between one coach and another. So I just want to make it on uh, my appeal on record that uh, I would like to discuss uh, the possibility of moving my coach to uh, uh, an area in the park where I will be have a little more room. Uh, and uh, I guess that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. And I would like to uh, thank Ron and uh, the, the staff uh, for uh, their presentation. And I thought they did a, a wonderful job. And, and I'm encouraged with their efforts. <coughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Phyllis Goff and Carl Keister and Randy Wahlberger. Hi, my name is Phyllis Goff, and I live in Mountain View Mobile Home Park in Eero, and I've lived there for 23 years. Uh, we almost made it to resident ownership. That's what the torch was, <coughs> and that happened in 96, but it didn't go through. So we had the $4 million that the city had graciously given to us, but it didn't work out that way. Now, I've already sent a packet of information, and I hope some of you have had the chance to look at it. And I'm going to try to make this fast. Um, there's one thing that's happening in the park that I am opposed to. First of all, the city housing is buying up mobile homes in the park and, turn, and putting renters in them. So some of them are our best mobile homes. I think that's a misuse of affordable housing money. The greatest thing about a mobile home park and the reason I, after I sold my home, I went into apartments and then I bought in the park because my sister was in there, is that it gives low-income people a chance to own a home. A pride of ownership is, is an important issue in life. And therefore, they've taken that away from a lot of people because they have turned away people that wanted to buy the mobile homes in here and bought them themselves. I, do, I think that is a misuse of affordable housing money. Uh, the, then they turn the renters into them, and this is, and I asked just what now do they want to buy? They want to spend money to buy new mobile homes to move in there. Uh, I think the new mobile homes should be something that the resident purchases with a loan program so that they can be owners. Every park that I've ever known, and when we did Torca, we <coughs> investigated a lot of parks, and the one thing they told us, don't make it a rental park. It has to be owners. They have to hire a full-time um, maintenance man to take care of these units now. So anyway, I just say that this is, uh, this is something that I'm against. Any more owners, any more mobile homes owned by the city. Uh, <clears throat> they went to the rent board and got 36 bases off of rent control for parking because for safety. Uh, there was five cars in D-Row and a few in the back that needed it. They didn't need 36, so now we have a parking lot. And what's going to happen? People have two and three cars in there. What's going to happen when they only can have one? That's another problem. And they wanted to go back and get more, but the rent board said no. Now, I want to get to the new rules and the reconfiguration, which is the most important thing in a way. They, they did their redesigning of the lots by a stroke of the pen. Now, they say that Title 25s, they're not under that. They don't have to abide by that, but that's true. But Title 25 is a state standard for mobile home parks. They have two codes, pre-61 and later. So I'm just going to say they picked and choose what they wanted to take from Title 25. And the three-foot setback in the front and a three-foot setback in the back take six feet off of a lot, and then they want to take three feet off of it parallel. I don't think this is conducive to making a better park, making lot sizes smaller. And there's no safety reason. The roads in Title 25 say 15 foot wide, and I called 
a representative from Title 25, and I said, have you changed that? And they said, no, there is no setback from the street, period. Uh, and they, that's a sa they, they go by safety issues. If that was a safety issue, they would have changed it a long time ago. So I hope you take a lot of time and review this, because this is not the best plan there could be for the park. Thank you. Thank you. My name's Carl Keister. I'm, I have uh, nine, number 56, 1930 Stewart Street. They're going to move my mobile home park, mobile home in the park to the fence with virtually no space whatsoever. I'll have, uh, when I moved in there, I moved, bought this place because I had a nice yard. I had a, a big old walk-in shed on a cement slab with electricity, which I won't have anymore. I don't think that's fair. Interesting. I'm sorry, but why would you have electricity? They're completely no, no. redoing everything in the park. No, no. I said I have a big shed, a walk-in shed on a cement slab oh, so with electricity in it. Oh, so you won't have but, uh, uh, What I can see of the plan, they're going to move my mobile home up against a fence, where when I go out my front door, I'll be walking right into the fence. Oh, I see. I have no space whatsoever, not even to go out and uh, have a barbecue, and there, I don't see no space for my shed. And if they were to move it, that you know, it wouldn't be on a cement slab anymore. I'm sure they probably wouldn't put electricity in it. Which, 18 years ago, it was there when I bought it, and that was one of the reasons I bought this place. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you very much, Randy Wahlberger, and uh, I believe. You have been given five minutes, as you have a couple of other pe people, Chris McLeod and Janet Minius, dedicated their time to you. So five minutes. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much for uh, hearing our issue. And I want to thank the Housing Department very much for buying our park, saving us. Uh, retaining us and trying to keep this mobile home park uh, alive and healthy because it it truly is um, a poor person's paradise um, we get along very well uh, we treat each other with respect we can look out for each other's children um, and because we are so uh, tight as a community. We have very little crime, and um, I just think it's a wonderful place to live. And I really appreciate all the the efforts the city has made to keep us around because we 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 think we have uh, something to offer the community. It's a stable environment for for children to be raised in. Um, you're probably looking at a petition, a copy of a petition that I got up. I only worked on it for two days. Um, I've got 43. Actually, uh, the three were by somebody else. I could have gotten uh, at least 20 more signatures. Uh, apparently, we have 76 residents. I've got 43. So we have a, at least the majority right now that favor the um, the upgrades. We we all favor the upgrades and we know that uh, some people are going to be inconvenienced but I think it's the overwhelming um, <clears throat> uh, opinion that we should go forward with this upgrade because we want to exist for another 55 years at least we want to turn this park over to our children we think it's a wonderful way to live and um, we want to be here to see it go to our children. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Cova Bill Smith and Ken Ward. Yeah, I'm one of those uh, poor guys he was talking about a while ago. Okay, can you give us your name and address? Yeah, well, I'm uh, Bill Smith. And I live at D11, that's in the front row. 
And my concern is here, a few uh, months ago, Mickey came, she was from the city, and told, uh, told me that they were going to move my mobile home back five foot. And, uh, well, it's not a mobile home, it's a, it's a travel trailer, a small 30-year-old travel trailer. Now, what I would like to know is, I want to ask, uh, I don't know, maybe I ask, you're in charge of this. I just wondered, uh, well, well, she told me that I would be, they're going to move me back to five foot. She told me that I would be able to have a bigger lot size and I could buy another travel trailer and put it on that place. Can I ask you, or will that be available for me to do that? I, 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 unfortunately, it's sort of out of context and out of our jurisdiction, and I think that's something that, unfortunately, you're going to have to ask directly of the housing department, oh, okay. uh, because we're dealing with planning oh, and okay. development issues, and while there are internal concerns which we are willing to hear here, it's not something that we can answer, and it's not appropriate for oh, the okay. housing division to answer okay. at this time, but please proceed. Well, that's about all. I just, I just wanted to know that if I was going to, or do you, well, you know, okay, that's good enough. Thanks a lot. <laughs> You're more than welcome. Thank you for coming. And Ken Ward. Uh, um, my name's Ken Ward. I'm 1930 Stewart. I'm the X-14. I'm the, one of the ones that are going to have to go and relocate because of a road that the fire department says was not even necessary. I submitted some paperwork over the weekend, an email. Um, I want to go and apologize for the line outs on the last page. I did send in a correction on it. Um, I also sent a copy of the fire marshal's uh, report and also about the um, uh, zoning administrator saying that the uh, any new mobile homes doesn't need to go through a development review because it's uh, you're not changing the pad. You're just bringing something new. So uh, on this, first of all, I would go and deny the uh, eight mobile homes because that shouldn't be on here because they're going to set a bad precedence. I came at the Planning Commission back uh, several years back, if you notice, uh, to go and put a new unit. I uh, went all the way through. I lost out on the deal. It's probably about $30,000 of that I've lost because of the... Uh, I'll just say games playing and uh, what it cost me in uh, legal fees and uh, lo losing the two-story. Uh, on this uh, right here, this is from before the city owned the park. Uh, this is when uh, Ramona Traffinger, the previous owner, had it. You can see all those rooms. The first, the first two rows, A and B, never had parking. When you moved in here, you knew what you had. I had three choices to go move in. Uh, I first was going to come back over here and back, and I said, no, I didn't want that one. Then I was going to come on over across from the office, and I didn't want that one. I finally found what really, what really I wanted, what really made me happy, what made me feel good 20, over 21 years ago, and that's this space. And it means a little bit more to me, yeah, and it's personal, so I really don't want to get into it. But as you notice, we never had a problem with parking. We never had a problem with fire hazards or with roads. We were pre-61. This was great. This was a community. We all were always together. Then there was a lawsuit. Ramona Treffinger sued the city of Santa Monica. To settle the lawsuit, they bought the park. And there's a little bit more into it, but that was basically it. The city bought the park to settle the lawsuit. So we from, go from there, um, and this is basically the diagram. Well, sorry, let me go into rent control. They went to rent control saying, oh, we need parking. We need more. We have to remove housing for parking. That was horrible. I, I protested at that. And uh, here you can see... Uh, as you, uh, I'll give you a moment or two okay. to, to finish off. So be succinct, okay. please. Thank you. So you can see that they were allowed to remove 36 units. And what did they do? They went more than that. And now they have to come back up to the 105. 
I would ask, why did you remove them in the first place? Um, and the last one is the map itself, where I'm at. I am right here. Well, why is the road only going to come over to one lane when, it, if they're going to do it, they should go all the way back to the fire road? But they don't. And then why aren't they straightening out the, these other units to make it, because you don't need this wide turn if you're going to make a road. Nothing really makes sense. And there again, I, if you I re, refer back to the fire marshal's letter, they, he talks nothing about that road. He only wants to go and remove G11 down here. So they would come this way. There's still enough room. And for the 21 years there, the fire department's been in there, the police been in there, and they, I've seen it. There has been no problems. And since the housing department has taken over, we now have graffiti there. We have, uh, like, gangs in there. So, I mean, I would really kind of question this. And there is graffiti still there now. If you go in the park, Excuse you'll me. see it. Um, that's okay, beyond our purview, so, and that's your over your time. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, uh, one last thing. The infrastructure, I, I want done right away. They can do that. Water, gas, electric, they need it. We need it. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, I guess the housing department is the, is the client here, so uh, applicant, so please. What I'd like to do, if it's okay with the, the uh, commission, is just answer any, any of your questions instead of trying to re rebut any of the commentary. Right. And then quickly, the, why is the road going just one spot, not all the way? If you um, could we get the plan up there? If you look at the plan, when we had our conversations with the fire department, our civil engineers here tonight too, and, and uh, could talk about this in more detail. They the concern was that the <coughs> trucks couldn't get in um, by where Mr. Ward's unit is, and they had a hard time turning around. I think it was E1, getting around the corner of E1, G1, G1, and um, so they. In that conversation, our civil engineer designed the road to cut through there uh, to, to provide access. And then they also required uh, in that letter that Mr. Ward mentioned that uh, G11 be removed too to provide that access. So if you look at the overall plan, you can see that we have an ingress and egress at the north end and at the south the end. bottom line, you don't need to go any further straight ahead. You, can just, you have ingress and egress all around. Okay. The, well. If the cut through wasn't there, the proposed where it says proposed new street, right. then first of all, the fire trucks have a hard time getting around that corner. That's their commentary, and then you have to go around the whole row, and then go back out. If there's an emergency going back there, and another emer uh, emergency vehicle needs to get out, mm -hmm. you you have that street blocked. Again, if if mobile homes burn in six minutes, and you can't, you have blockage in the streets there. Uh, we want to improve the emergency access. Uh, one thing that wasn't mentioned is, yes, there's a letter there that mentions uh, the conditions from the fire department to approve that. But what wasn't mentioned is there's two, two plans in the fire department's file. One was dated a few days after the other day, and I know Scott has copies of those plans, and it shows that proposed street on there, and that's how the fire department approved the, the uh, plan on moving forward. So my logic is telling me you didn't need to go straight ahead with the street that this configuration is just fine for the fire purposes. This this is the modified one. Well the one that he's the, the one that that's being presented to us is the one that is Yes. It's, it's just fine for the fire department purposes. They don't need to make a street go any other direction. I understand. As that. the plans propose that they're thank you. They're good with that. Commissioner Don. A uh, couple of things. Uh, there are two things that strike me here. One is, is there a comparability when people are moving from one location to another? Uh, at least one person's testimony seemed to indicate that there is not comparability. So I'd like to know how that was addressed. And then my other question is, since there seems to be confusion or lack of understanding on the part of some of the residents, 
Why is that? Were there meetings with residents? Do they understand what is being done, either by having met in groups or individually? Or what happened and what didn't happen? Okay. On the first question, as far as comparability of the lot size, our civil engineer here is Larry, and he can speak more to what he went through in the design. But certainly the lot size needed to accommodate the relocation. And in this case, the gentleman in 56, basically the street's going through where his space was, and he was moved up against the north property line against the park. But as you can see, his mobile home fits on that space. So, and Larry can talk more about that as far as the design criteria he went through. And on the second question, yes, there were meetings. In fact, we hired a relocation specialist who moved on site and talked to those people that were going to be impacted by the move. She actually moved on site, set up appointments. She was there. We had a meeting to say she was there. Go talk to her so you understand you know, the impact on your mobile home or your location. Okay, thank you. Going back to the first question again, um, the person who spoke indicated that he ha actually had more. He, he had a shed. So was it comparable but not the same amount of space or, 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 or what? There's a discrepancy here that... I'd like to understand. I'd like to ask Larry McDermott, our civil engineer, to, to come up and address Thank that. Thank you. My name is Lawrence McDermott, uh, civil engineer, land planner. My address 18075 La Ventana, Murrieta, California. And uh, in that particular case, if I could just back up a little bit to the access road for fire purposes, the uh, besides being uh, advantageous for the fire trucks to go around there, it also... Um, provides a better layout for the utility uh, phasing in that you, if you didn't have that street there, you'd be jockeying all over with the uh, infrastructure. This makes it easier to phase. And uh, we also were utilizing the existing parking spaces across from the space G1 in the middle. As long as they were there, we decided to maintain them. And I personally, when I was out there, a fire truck was trying to make the maneuver. Was it sort of a demonstration? And to make the turn around the G1, they had to stop, back up, and turn. And uh, this is much, much better. You know, we're giving two fire hydrants instead of one. Beginnings back to space, I believe, was 56. Uh, I think, as I went out and inspected every one, that if you notice, this takes up more area than any other uh, home in the park. And I think that the storage facility was underneath a... Uh, the awning, I could be wrong. It's possible that there was an external uh, storage that may, that I may have thought belonged to a different lot, but I don't think so. And, and it's something we very possibly could work out if that's the case. There was no intention to, to short him on anything. And uh, it was very, very difficult to maintain 105 spaces without, you know, a little bit of sacrifice here and there. I know that Mr. Ward is one of the ones that got uh, probably less than he had before, though everything fits on his space. If we could go with 104 spaces, why, there'd be no problem. But there's nowhere. This plan is so tight that it's just very, very difficult. Okay, so what you're saying is that those attempts were, were made, but it couldn't be 100% because of how everything had to fit. Well, I, that, I thought that, we made it 100 percent, but 100 percent of the people weren't going to be happy. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. And if there was some oversight on a storage bin or something, that we still could work that out, I'm sure. Okay. But, but basically, the living spaces have the comparability, and, uh, and, and efforts were made to for people to be able to maintain what they had in the original space. Absolutely, and just one more thing. Uh, the uh, lady's right, the front yard setback is zero, and the uh, units that are moving just a small portion are mostly on the perimeter, and it's because they did not have the required <coughs> Title 25. We'll go back to that separation from the property line, so we had to pull them forward for safety purposes so you could get around them. Uh, there were only a few spaces internally that 
did not have six foot separation, and there's two rules with Title 25. That's you need three foot to the setback or to the lot line with the unit and six foot separation. So a lot of these lot lines, they only can be in one place, and yet I know there's some places that because of landscaping, some people feel that they have five feet and the other person has one, but I understand that they're going to let them do some type of a paperwork uh, easements. And the uh, other thing I wanted to mention, escapes my memory for the moment, um, well, while you're thinking of that, I know that Commissioner Thank Clark you. had a question. Just a quick question. So, so the most of these uh, streets, drives, whatever we want to call them, are intended to be one way in terms of the circulation. Yes. And and there's, although I, I bet at, at least one of those arrows must really need to point in the other direction, because otherwise everyone's going to end up in the lower right corner and uh, <laughs> not quite know where to go. I, I always leave one thing on the plan for the planning to. <laughs> <laughs> And I, and I do know the arrow you're talking about. Uh, so, so, so which one turns around, just out of curiosity? Huh? Uh, so, but it's one way going out to Virginia, if, I, if I'm in the right spot. OK. Uh. What's a little deceptive about this plan is, in fact, even though the property line kicks up, the driveway goes across, so you must have an easement from. No, actually, the, what, what, what you don't see, or what isn't clear, is there is a portion of Virginia right away that's right. beyond their property that I see. they yes. use. That you connect into. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because I saw that in the final plans. <laughs> oh, and, so, and the other thing I do remember, it was a case that the zero lot line had no effect in the front, the zero front setback had no effect on relocation. We did not move any coaches because of a zero not having a three-foot front. Um, so if you have any other questions, I'd be happy to address them. This time for you. I don't uh, believe that we do have that. Uh, just out of my personal curiosity, uh, uh, it, is, is the city encouraging home ownership in, in this park? As I mentioned, uh, we have discussed that at the Housing Commission. Um, as far as coming up what we're calling a mobile home replacement program. So yes, we would encourage home ownership, not only for the renters, but also an opportunity to, for any existing uh, residents to, that are homeowners to upgrade their, their units too, as long as- and, and new residents potentially also would be able to well, bring, were, bring a unit in, uh, own, own a unit? Well, we'd have standards for the new units to come right. in, and then um, we would have to basically think through how we might want to assist them as far as loans or, or whatever. Again, it's something we need to take to council and see if they would approve that. But what you're saying, I guess, is that as a city, you're open to the idea, you just haven't developed Most all definitely. of the... Most yeah. definitely. We, we want to upgrade not only the, the physical infrastructure, but we'd also like to assist the residents and any new residents coming in so that we have a mobile home park. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Coney? I, yeah, I had a question. Just you, you, the the owners are still renting the pad, right? The site. Yes, all the all the pads or spaces are rented. Rented, and, and th that's the rent control part of the equation. Right, and can is it possible? I think the one gentleman mentioned he wanted to rent a pad adjacent to his or a site adjacent, and can you do it? Can you do that and put a double wide on that? Well, that the, the, permit? the site's so tight. Getting 105 spaces in there is is the we don't have extra spaces, extra lots. But could somebody rent two spaces and push the units together to do that? Uh, you only know, have 104, I've, but then, right? You know, I I think our first <coughs> response would be we want to provide more affordable units or more affordable rents, and and providing somebody two spaces just doesn't seem to be the right approach. Okay, thanks. So I believe at this time it's before us, commissioners. Uh, any thoughts, considerations, ideas, proposals, motions? Yes, so I would move that we adopt staff recommendation, go further with a terrific project that we should compliment everyone involved in the housing department and the housing division <laughs> and the housing authority <laughs> and, the <laughs> and the housing housing that they should all be very proud of a project and the people who live there should be very 
thrilled that they're getting all these upgrades and basically saving people's lives. Because I'm familiar in, in Village, which is just a few blocks away, someone took their own life about a month or so ago out of uh, concern of the future of that particular park. I can't say why they took it. I'm just saying it happened. So people's lives are dramatically impacted. This is a terrific project and full steam ahead. And congratulations to everyone involved. We should be proud as a city of being able to save this project. So. Uh, second, and I want to comment that, yes, there are still imperfections, but this has been a long time coming, and a lot of work has gone into it. And some of those imperfections will be smoothed out as well. So, uh, roll call. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Cotter? Yes. Chair Pugh? Yes. And uh, a motion on the star from somebody? Uh, so moved. Second. Commissioner Cotter? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Chair Pugh? Yes. All right. Thank you, everyone. You're very lucky. Uh, so uh, we've, I think, come to almost the end here. We have our standard uh, discussion for input discussion on possible action on policies, process, materials, and timeline. Uh, and uh, just, I guess, speaking out loud here, uh, there are a number of organizations that I've been approaching, the hospitals and also the Visitors Bureau. Uh, I had indicated to them that September might be a doable date, and it sounds like we might... October to would be much better. Okay. I think they might actually prefer that. So um, I think that's all I have on that. Anybody else have any items re relative? Question to, to uh, Commissioner Clark. You, on the item, uh, two items ago on the agenda, uh, we were talking about the historical house being used as a, uh, let's say, combined development, mm -hmm. for lack of a better phrase. Uh, in this discussion, do you want to explain at least some conceptual direction that should be considered? Uh, I think would we not make that, that a future item? Well, I don't know if it's part, part item. is it not part of 10A of the land use mm -hmm. update? Mm -hmm. I it's think not just a board discussion item. It would be something that would, should be, uh, in my mind, yeah. looked at carefully uh, by the uh, update the land use element, this whole concept of, of preserving our existing historical. I, I think probably the best way to go with it is it's been something in the air as we talk about ways of changing the way we develop existing neighborhoods and to try to keep that fresh in mind as we address that in the uh, land use element update. Well, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know if, I, I don't know if we're going to have not, not to talk about, you know, certainly not to talk about now, but I mean, is it worth agendizing as a separate topic or will we get to it as part of the land use element discussion about <coughs> residential? Normally we would, but you know how these things go. Someone prepares things and presents it before yeah. us. And I suspect we're going to have a big chapter on historical landmarks such as so, and they're going to have another massive uh, area talking about land use development zoning and development criteria, and the two will never have a chapter that match the two together. It's a real concern. Um, maybe that just as memo to staff that we have... It's an issue that the Landmarks Commission has been very involved in and has made a number of recommendations and has been um, paying a lot of attention to the entire land use um, and circulation element process and the zoning ordinance issues as they come up. So I, I don't think this is going to be an issue that's going to not merge in with all the land use policies that we're working on. It's an issue that's very much at the forefront. Um, so that being said, I don't know if it's yeah. worth the Commission having further discussion at this time. It's certainly going to be an important issue that's going to come forward when we get to that level of detail in the project. I, I, I think it definitely fits in, in two things that I've mentioned before in various circumstances. One is it's not just about isolated landmarks, but it's about the overall historic fabric, yes. number one. And number two, to have a, uh, you know, a lower by right threshold and then discretionary approval as a way of incenting things like this that we would like to do. And because uh, you know, we we have talked about that before, yeah. 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 And so, so we, anyway, just as a reminder, we want to keep this front and center. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson, for. Uh, I'm satisfied. If you're satisfied.
I remain skeptical. For the moment. <laughs> uh, I don't believe we have any written communications at this time apart from the Planning Commission case list and uh, future Commission agenda items. We've kind of maybe merged that with number 10. Uh, actually, I actually have two that don't okay. have to do with number 10. Okay. One is uh, for the Commission to discuss, and I would hope. I hope this could be in September when we're going to have some of the traffic people here anyhow to discuss intersection signage traffic signals. There's some specifics there that um, uh, I think we'll get input from other commissioners on, but I certainly have some specifics. Um, and the other item is to discuss requesting of the City Council the reinstatement of the design compatibility review process. Yeah. I would like to add one uh, discussion item and that is um, it's 12 o'clock now and then last meeting we were left at 8 and uh, we scheduled an ARB appeal hearing that was sort of two and a half months away and if I understand correctly it's a, it's a small business on Wilshire. Uh, I think we need to look at how we carry out our meetings and perhaps hear some development review things on some of the nights that we, we know we have a short agenda on the uh, development, I mean the policy hearings. Uh, I, th I think making somebody, delaying somebody two and a half months uh, for an ARB appeal, I don't think that's quite right. Right. So, so we're not discussing it now, but we'll agendize that exactly. for discussion. Right. So soon, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I saw that. Uh, so I think at this point with, uh, well, let's see, the public's gone. <laughs> well, I guess we don't have any input from them, so we are hereby adjourned. Adjourned.